Hello friends, in the present video, let us study about the Swedish method of slices. Okay. So in the previous video, we have studied the analysis of finite slopes for a purely cohesive soil. So here, this Swedish method of slices that is applicable for the C5 soils. Okay, even if it is a purely cohesive soil, we can simplify the final equation in terms of the purely cohesive soil. Okay, let us remember that this method of slices, Swedish method of slices is applicable for the C5 soils. Okay, now the name itself it is implied method of slices that means the entire failure plane is divided into number of parts and then we will study the single part stability of the single part and then we will add effect of the all the parts in by using some summation so here one more thing we have to assume that assuming that contact forces contact forces between the slices or else i will call it as a parts so the contact force between the slices or parts are neglected so in general wherever you are separating or wherever you are drawing the free body diagram then definitely the contact forces will exist but in this analysis the contact forces between the surfaces of the parts are neglected okay now for that let us consider a finite slope let us consider an embankment of finite slope and let us assume that the failure plane is somewhere like this if this is your failure plane this entire soil mass is failing then this soil mass is failured by rotating with respect to failure by rotating with respect to some common point let us say the point of rotation is nothing but a o and let us also say that the radius of the rotation that will be equal to r so in this method this failure mass we will divide it into some number of parts according to our convenience suppose let us say i am dividing into number of parts according to my convenience but in general you have to consider the number of parts in such a way that your accuracy should not compromise okay so as it is difficult to guess the number of parts by its ourself in the exam so this number of parts they will give you in the exam so don't worry so one two three four five six that means this failure mass i have divided into six different parts okay let us say i am going to study forces acting on the sum part so if i draw a slice of the failure plane how it look like this isn't it okay let me redraw it again with an enlarged shape such that we can understand them easily so let us say this is one of the slices on the failure plane okay this slice is also rotating with respect to the a point of rotation let us say o and whatever the distance to the failure plane so whatever the slice you consider what is the distance between them as it is in the form of failure the failure is in the form of circular arc the radial distance is same everywhere let us say the radial distance is r now what about the forces acting on this slice as we have already discussed along this side it is contacted with the another surface this side is also contacted with the another surface but for this method for the simplified analysis we will assume that we are not considering any forces on the sides of the parts other than that any other forces there are no external forces but self weight will act on the element let us say the, what is the sulfate act, acting on the element let us say the sulfate of this part will be is equal to w okay so what we have to find we have to find 
what is the driving moment and also we have to find what is the resisting moment isn't it so if you want to find the driving moment so what we'll find out we will find out some driving force so driving force i am representing with fd multiply by the what is the distance rotation r suppose if your sulfide is acting like this how much driving force it will cause that we will get understand by resolving this sulfide along the tangential and normal to the failure plane now here let us draw a tangent let us draw a tangent and let us assume that this tangent is making an angle alpha with respect to horizontal right if this is alpha what is the angle with this is this force is vertical this is horizontal what about this angle this angle is nothing but a 90 degrees and what about this angle this angle is we can say 90 minus alpha so resolve this force along the tangential direction and normal direction if you resolve this how much you will get so this is nothing but a tangential direction w into tangential is making an angle so w into cos of 90 minus alpha that we can call it as a w sin alpha so what about the force that is parallel to the surface that you will get it as a w cos alpha so by seeing these two forces which force is causing the driving w sin alpha so it is at a distance of r from the point of rotation so what is the driving moment we can say that is w sin alpha into r isn't it so this is what for a which one single slice if you are having number of slices so what is the total driving moment this is the driving moment for the single slice what about the total driving moment what about the driving moment for the entire so what about the total driving force total driving moment of the entire failure plane so this is what for the single if you want it for the all the slices then we have to use the summation that means summation w sin alpha into r isn't it so this w sin alpha this is nothing but a tangential force so instead of writing w sin alpha in some cases they may directly give you the tangential forces of each element in that case how do we have to write it down that will be nothing but a summation of tangential forces into r so this is what the total driving moment for the entire failure mass or failure plane now let us find out what is the total resisting moment what about the resisting moment so resisting moment what we can call it as that we can get the that will be nothing but a resisting force multiply by the whatever the perpendicular distance so whatever the element you take whatever the slice you take so everywhere it is forming the distance r so how the resisting force we can talk about so for that we have to understand what is the shear strength that will be equal to c plus normal stress into tan phi so in this equation either you consider cohesion so this cohesion will always be in the stress only so first we have to convert this so if you want to convert so what is the single slice let us say the length of the slice is l so c into l plus whatever sigma n this is in terms of the stress otherwise we can directly take the normal force what is the normal force acting on this slice nothing but a w cos alpha so w cos alpha into tan phi so this is what for the single element what about for all the elements so for all the elements the resisting force that can be written as that will be equal to summation of as it is as the slope is made of same material cohesion of the material will be constant so c will comes out of the bracket summation of arc length of the each slice plus 
summation of the w cos alpha that means normal force component into tan phi so in some cases they may give you angles and the weight of the slice but in some cases they may directly give you the normal forces so in this case how can i replace it c into summation of l that means summation of length all the slices plus summation of normal forces of the all slices into tan phi so if you know the resisting force how can you get the resisting moment so resisting moment i am representing with by using c into summation of arc length of all the slices plus summation of normal forces of all the slices into tan phi multiply by the distance r so what about the factor of safety factor of safety can be written as resisting moment divided by driving moment what is the resisting moment just now we have got c into summation of l plus summation of normal forces into tan phi multiplied by r divided by this is simply nothing but a summation of tangential force into r so rr gets cancelled so how much factor of safety you are getting so here it will be equal to cohesion into summation of failure plane length for all the slices plus summation of normal forces of all the slices into tan phi divided by summation of tangential forces for all the slices so by using this equation we can say whether the failure plane we have considered whether it is a stable or not by using if factor of safety is coming less greater than 1 then we can it is a stable slope if it is coming less than 1 then we can say that will be a failure so in the next class we will solve some problems based on this equation thank you